Hello everyone and welcome to Tutorials Part 8. Um, so I actually already made this but the video was too long so I had to separate it and it glitched out my program so I had to separate it into two 15 minute videos. It doesn't like to do half an hour videos. So I have a lot of comments here um, of my old code so I can do it faster. And so we'll just be going over AI right now and then the second tutorial will be how to make it efficient. So the first tutorial is finishing up the health bar. Uh, disappear it when the uh, enemy dies and to make it so that if you're a certain distance away the enemy responds and we'll talk a little bit about the um, why this code is efficient in this tutorial so to start off um, to delete the health bar it's quite easy you can just do kill dot overlays uh, minus equal kill dot the saved um, uh, variable the health uh, bar and that will delete the uh, red um, health but there will still be the black bar. To delete the black bar you just gotta create a new bar um, so the overlay equals new so killed dot overlays minus equals O. Oh. So this will, this will um, create a health bar that's equal to um, this var o, variable O, and then I'll minus the um, minus this object from kill dot overlays. So from the person that's killed and their um, list of overlays they have over their character. So now that we got that done, we should. Was following us and when we kill it it should have its health bar disappeared yep and it'll respawn okay we're good so now we want to make it so when it's a certain distance away when we are a certain distance away it'll respawn how do we do that let's go into our uh, where is it in enemy so I will show you a mistake I made when I was doing this, just so I can show you mistakes, because it would be terrible if you just start out coding, you make a mistake, you're like, whoa, I have no idea how to handle this, right? Um, since you're following my tutorials, um, you're not going to run into a lot of errors, so I will go over an error that I made. So this is how I started it. First, I was I made a variable equal to mob, uh, target, and I'm calling the mob a target, and this mob is going to equal to... Uh, the enemy's target. So under the enemy's tree, so circ is equal to the enemy. So circ dot target. So now we have a variable that is equal to the target that is in the mob tree. Since it's in the mob tree, you can use mob variables. So now we can use a mob variable like if target dot x uh, dot x just means it's x tile position in the map um, is less than the enemy's position minus three. So if it's three tiles to the left, we want the enemies to respawn. So if our player character um, is three tiles to the left, then we will activate this code which will respawn. Or target.x is greater than circ.x plus three. So this is saying when the when our x position is greater than the enemy's position plus three. So when we're three tiles to the right, then we will also do this code. And you can do it yourself for the um, for the y component. Instead of cert.x, it's cert.y. And you can probably toy around with that and figure that out, um, just so you can do it yourself. And so then I continued after I did that with getting our reset done. So to reset our character to a good position, we make them, make them so they stop moving. And we make their location equal to their uh, respawn variable and we make sure their target is equal to null and so when we run this what happens just so I can show you my error so when I first ran this I had a terrible error do, 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 where the enemies just didn't do anything they just totally broke down and so to test when these things happen what I usually do is I do world. World basically can out is a 
kind of predefined thing that can output um, text to every player in the world. And I call it, um, I usually just say hi, just to see if my code is running. Just a little, uh, a little beep to see if my code is actually activating this part. And from, from my perspective, I think it should be, but as we see, look, hi, hi should print here in our, in our um, output message box, but yet it's not. Nothing is printing out, so that means this hi is failing for some reason. This, this if statement is actually failing for some reason. And why is that? Because I didn't check to see if the target, if the circ.target was actually something. What if it was nothing? If the, if the circ.target was nothing, it would be saying nothing.x is less than circ.x. And that would cause problems. So to avoid a situation like that, we can do um, if circ.target is not equal to null. And then just do that. So now it should follow me. If I go out of the distance, it should respond. See, it's responded. Follow me, respond. And we got the hey message displaying now. Um, now you saw the hey message started um, printing even while it wasn't going the, through this code. So now we'll start on the theory of the efficiency basically during this first tutorial. And the second tutorial that will come up today as well will be focusing on um, how to implement this. So let's just show you how it's um, inefficient. So. We had it sleep one before, so let's just. I have a bunch of comments. So I had to redo it because my video uh, wouldn't just totally broke down because it was um, too long. So I think I fixed all my code to be pre back to its previously state. So now look at this. Oh yeah, I'll explain it. What's this mean? So the reason why I put times eight is because we went through about eight lines of code. We're going through. Um, so while the AI is activated. While circ, um, the best case scenario, there is no target, um, so we don't go through this, and there is no mob in get step, so we don't go through that. So in best case scenario, there's eight lines of code. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. Nine, including our world, but we won't count that because that won't be in here. So the best scenario, it is going through eight lines of code. But each enemy will run this every 10 milliseconds. So only with three enemies, you can see this, this, is, this is how many times it is running eight lines of code. This is terribly inefficient. You know, I put this cursor up here, it just keeps on growing. Even when I'm not beside the enemy, even when I'm not moving, even when there's no combat going on, this is, even when the enemy's dead, this will still happen. And so this is terribly inefficient. It just it's just a monster and this the more enemies you have, the more enemies that will keep on running this code. So how can we fix that? We'll be discussing the next tutorial. And efficiency problems like that are really bad. Um, it usually happens with infinite while loops. When a while loop doesn't stop and you haven't defined when a while loop should stop, while loops should only should not happen for a very long time. They should be able to be stopped, unless there's a special ability that maybe is a transformation. Um, like I've used while loops for transformations that constantly uh, tick away health. And that's something that ticks away health, um, like a damage effect. You do not want a while loop happening for a long period of time. Because you don't, you shouldn't need while loops. You should be thinking of ways that you can make your program work without infinite while loops. And so I just showed you this method. It's a very simple method to start out and understand. And next video, yeah, let's call it part two, I will show you how to make this efficient and so it doesn't, so you don't have these problems and I will tell you why it's efficient. You probably could think of more efficient ways, but for the purpose of a 2D sprite game, I think my method is efficient enough to, um, so you can not have any problems. If your world, yeah. 
So that's uh, where we'll leave off, and next tutorial I will show you how to make this efficient and so it doesn't run constantly all the time like this. So thank you for watching, leave any comments below, and um, yeah, have a good day. Yeah, and you can always comment me on my Beyond account too, which is just on TV Fenris. So see you.